Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Consulting Podcast. This is your host, Mohammed Mispa, aka The Consulting Guy. Very exciting episode today, the very first episode for 2021. Today, Woo. I have <laughs> Kazu Patel with me. Most of you, or, or most of you, or all of you may know her as the face behind management.consultant, a very fast growing social media consulting focused uh, so, uh, Instagram page, uh, YouTube. Uh, she's also a senior consultant at Deloitte, top 100 woman in tech, recently named, awarded, uh, a powerhouse of uh, a consultant. Kajal, very excited to have you and thank you for taking the time on a Sunday evening for you uh, and joining me on the podcast. How are you? No, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really good. Uh, really hungry, but, you know, really <laughs> excited for this at the same time. Very good, very good. So Kajal, I, you know, I've been following you since I think the inception of your account. So, but for those who don't know you, do you mind introducing yourself just a little bit? Yeah. Hey everyone, my name is Kajal. I am a consultant at Deloitte. I've been there for nearly four years now. I focus mostly on proposition design, on customer experience, business strategy, and product management. And in my spare time, I have a YouTube channel where I help people right now to um, have, have more successful work lives and hoping to move into entrepreneurship and productivity soon as well. Excellent, excellent. And Kajal, you've seen tremendous growth over the past, I would say, it's been less than a year, right, since you started your channel? It's been, I counted it today, actually, it's been eight months, I think. Eight now. months. Eight months. So eight. since June, June. June, and, and roughly, I think, 5,000 followers that you actually cut down, which was, <laughs> which was quite funny, because I was like, oh, people typically don't cut down. <laughs> so was Quality that Quality overgrowth. <laughs> I, I had a few. I think it was you who said this to me, right? I was yeah. like treating it like a like like a consulting firm up or out policy. <laughs> Seriously, and I, I saw that message. I was like, wait, I I've never. I don't think in my whole social media you know experience anyone ever posted that I'm just gonna cut people. Hey guys, <laughs> like if you're not engaging with me, I'm gonna cut you, and I don't care about growth or any numbers or anything. Yeah, honestly, if you're just um not if you're just following but following me but not really looking at me the whole time, then um. I don't feel like you're getting value from my content, which mm. is why I don't feel like, um, you know, that you're interested in my content and hence, yeah. you know, potentially it ends up being a, like in Instagram terms, I'm being really pedantic here, but it ends up being like a ghost follower. And then yeah. hence the algorithm does um, not favor you when you have more like ghost followers than, you know, active followers. Ah, so, so, th so there's a science to this. There is science to it. And that's, okay, that is actually the reason I did it. It's because I am treating my, you know, this whole thing on the side, a little bit like a side hustle, a little bit like a hmm. startup. So, um, you know, I do feel that quality is a key metric that we all should oh, keep in our lives. <laughs> key metric, <laughs> KPI. Word, oh my God, <laughs> already, we're, we're five minutes into the interview, first KPI dropped. <laughs> Exactly. No, excellent. That's, that's uh, I, I now it makes sense, right? Because I, I guess the algorithm favors uh, actual engagement versus just yeah. ghost followers and high numbers. But uh, so just to take a step back, Kajal, how did you get started in consulting? Is this something that you were passionate about? Because I, I see your videos on YouTube, your mm -hmm. IG content, and and uh, you're very um, what's the right term? You're very enthusiastic about consulting and <laughs> explaining, and maybe it's your personality. But talk talk me through how you got started yeah. in consulting. So I didn't even know that consulting existed till the th last year of my university. Okay. I'm not sure if that happened to you, but it happened to me. And actually, I was one of those individuals where, you know, I was so keen to go and start my own thing. You know, one of those millennials being like, yes, I can be an entrepreneur with no money and make it yeah. in life. So I had like a few side hustles going on the side. Um, and, you know, some of them are successful. A lot of them failed. And... Um, I realized that the reason I was failing was because I didn't really know how to scale. I had like, like I think I had great ideas. I had ideas which people wanted to use, but in terms of scaling, that's where I really suffered. So for me, I want to learn like, how can I learn from these big corporate firms who, mm. you know, earn millions of pounds, billions of pounds from clients to scale well, and they get, they come in to scale their businesses or to help them solve problems. So I really wanted to learn from them. And my, my goal going into consulting was to leave with a skill set across all different areas from sales, marketing, strategy, yeah. you know, um, product management and so forth, so that I could take it and start my own thing. And mm. this was um this was like this was like me going into consulting, but now four years in, I basically create and build new startups inside big corporate firms. So okay. I'm kind of doing it for big firms right now. And 
I love it. Like, it's crazy. I actually love it. And which is why I'm still here. <laughs> and no, I love Deloitte. Shows. So <laughs> that's oh, why I'm still there. <laughs> oh, stop. This is... Uh... I'm, I'm not gonna send if this to Deloitte's listening. If Deloitte's <laughs> no, listening, I no love you. Points. <laughs> no, that's very interesting. So, what what startups were you uh, focused on at senior year in your university? That that's quite interesting. Yeah, so I had um, one to do with social, like a social impact startup, where essentially mm. um, you ranked charities based on causes. So, sorry, you grouped charities based on causes, and then you ranked charities within it. Okay. So that made sense. And then it was essentially, it was like a donation piece. Um, the other thing was, um, it was like Foursquare and Instagram mixed together where you ca- you leave stickers where you are. So it's like a diary, a journal of your travel um, as you go along. Wow. Another one was this thing called Jukebox, which I helped with. And it was um, whenever you go into cafes and, you know, you can change the music and you have, you, you have power over the music so it ends up being like you know a jukebox across with everyone inside the um very interesting the coffee machine and stuff so, and then that's a few and then when I before that I used to like have one of those side hustle jewelry businesses those side hustle typical like sweet businesses as I was going up in school so um, that is that is know. awesome most, most <laughs> of uh university students or you know especially like juniors or seniors are not thinking about that you're very focused on just getting good grades trying to land a job yeah. and, you know get to that safety net but you're had four or five different things going for you for me it was the opposite like i didn't care about grades which is really bad my, <laughs> my brown indian mom will kill me right now <laughs> but <laughs> i didn't really care about grades i cared about um you know enjoying and learning the most i could in areas i found interesting okay. so i used to end up going to talks from science and genetics to talks mm. to philosophy to entrepreneurship and my university um had a big um had a big startup scene I would say a big entrepreneur okay. scene so um I went to Imperial College London it's a like a very specialist science university in London and um very tech like very tech focused so we always had some really interesting speakers come in um which were obviously were very motivating and inspiring yeah and uh, a big incubator program going on internally which uh, you know allowed me to kind of open my eyes and see like oh shit there's so much i could do <laughs> yeah no that that's awesome and and uh it's it's quite unique i would say i mean it's probably a a, a phenomenon that's true for a lot of millennials because that's the focus mm. nowadays right there's no longer yeah. that mindset that you have to pick a career and stick to it for the rest of your life until you yeah. retire Right. But having four or five uh, hustles, side hustles, as you put it, uh, it's, yeah. it's quite interesting. Any of those you still follow or most of them dropped after you you picked up your uh, Deloitte? Yeah. So I think most of them dropped, actually, I would say a majority of them dropped. Um, okay. And that's fine. I think like uh, like most of them failed, I would say. And that was the reason why I went into consulting. OK. Um, like and then. I also lost interest in a few of them, which I was like, okay, you know, if I'm not passionate about it, like, is it something I really want to continue doing? Yeah. On? Um, obviously, um, people would be like, yeah, but what about the money coming in? Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't re- as interesting to me. And I was like, okay, let me focus my efforts on things which I find interesting. And obviously as you grow and you know, your interests do change. Right. So, yep, yep. um, I think when I was 15, I probably didn't care about trading or like, you know, investing. But like, Mm -hmm. you know, as I went to university and saw like, you know, how much money my dad makes from investing and like just sitting on the sofa, I was like, why not? (laughs) Right, right, right. So your your transition into Deloitte, was that right out of uni? Like, did you apply through the career program and you get in through interviews or was it like an experience higher? How, How did that go? Yeah. So for me, it was a year. I took a gap year in a way, but in that gap year, I was doing, um, well, essentially, I had lined up one internship in the gap year. Okay. And I also was working on my startup on the side, like an, uh, like uh, one of the startups I mentioned. And then I um, entered Deloitte as a graduate in okay. the analyst program. So I went through two years of analyst program, um, you know, two years as consultant and now senior consultant there. Very nice. Very nice. And and I'm assuming that this, you, you find it home. You kind of give Deloitte a shout out, you know, without asking. So... <laughs> You're loving it there? I think, you know, the UK Deloitte firm is incredible, which is why I'm still there. I wouldn't be in a... I'm one of those people where I get bored really easy. I'm very fickle. If, if I'm yeah. not learning, if I'm bored, I will move. Um, but I'm still learning from my peers around me, which and I'm still challenged by them, which is why I'm still there. Absolutely. Um, 
And I do, I do think the Deloitte firms do differ, the cultures differ, you know, depending on where you are in the world. But the UK firm is pretty tight knit and it's pretty, uh, it feels like a family, which is quite nice, actually. Okay. And uh, so, so just, just in How's terms Centra, of- Accenture, by the way, I'm quite curious. How's Accenture? Yeah. Uh, it, it's great. It's been great to me. I mean, I, I've, I've had a similar, I would say, trajectory as yours or the one you're yeah. going through where um, I did, I had no idea what consulting was. I think I've mentioned in a previous yeah. podcast, right? It was sort of by luck on a dinner, right? That someone was talking about it. And I, I felt very um, attracted to what they were saying. And I, I just turned around yeah. and said, hey, I hate to eavesdrop, but what, what are you talking about? Right? It was a senior year. They told me about consulting. This is the first time I heard it as a career. Uh, yeah. went online, right? It was the last day to apply for Accenture uh, as <laughs> yeah. the interview rounds, right? It, kind of like a movie story. So I applied, got the interviews and the rest was history. And I, it's been good to me. I think I've been good to it Amazing. and Accenture has been great to me, right? I've, I've seen, uh, you know, I've done a lot of great work, a lot of challenging work, right? And to Amazing. your point, the folks around me still challenge me, which is why yeah. you sort of stay, right? It's the projects and everything is great, right? But the people around you, as long as you're still learning from them, uh, keeps you there. I also had a failed startup in the mix that we could go into, but it, I think it teaches you a lot. It teaches it you a does. lot. I think that that failure, and it was, um, so I'll just tell you quick quick about it. So it was kind of like, uh, think about it as a, a Tinder for activities. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, as a consultant, I was traveling a lot, Amazing. right? And I, I was just in yeah. my hotel room after hours, can't do anything in whatever town that I'm in. So uh, if another friend of mine, like another consultant, who's actually at Deloitte now, uh, yeah, Khan, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was at Accenture before, uh, you know, we're like, why don't we, instead of people meeting, why don't you meet on the basis of an activity, right? Yeah. Whether it's like, hey, you know, we're going to go to this place or we're going to go play this game or whatever. And you broadcast your activity out and then people could swipe on your activity and join you for that. Um, cool. Yeah, we built out an MVP, you know, we pitched it to a couple of uh, yeah. uh, angel investors and we actually got into this, um, uh, this incubator. But yeah. one of one of their uh, asks were for us to quit our jobs. And, and at that point, <laughs> for, for any seed money, right? And at that point, we're like, I yeah. don't know, do you really want to do this? Because there's yeah. so much to learn, right? These consulting yeah. firms and the projects that you're doing, you're getting so much to learn. Yeah. You really don't want to jump off at that point. And I actually do think that in consulting, I mean, we, there's a concept of entrepreneurship. Yeah. But in consulting, the concept of entrepreneurship is yeah. really important. And I feel like, you know, you can still learn the same things you'd learn as an entrepreneur. Probably may not have as much control, right, over yeah. it. But you can, you're pretty much looking after your own business in a way, yep. but yep. not as much control. And that's one of the things which I find interesting and I love about consulting as well. Absolutely. So, so yeah. The, the um, big... I'm actually quite curious as well. One more question for you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Um, when you when you applied for consulting and you got in, mm -hmm. was it totally different to what they sold, or was or was it similar to what they sold? Um. Uh, that's a, that's a good one. I I think uh, because I had no expectations, nor did mm -hmm. I know that you know I'll be honest now now almost like nine years in. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what I was getting yeah. into, right? I, I knew high level, ugh, another consulting word, like what, what we're gonna talk, like the projects and the, the clients and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, because of that sort of, uh, you know, if you will, ignorance, right? Everything I did was a fresh start, right? And I loved it because I, I too get bored very quickly. I love challenges. I love the people dynamic of it, right? And, and that, that my, um, my career gave me that. Right. So I, yeah. I, I think I, it was it's been good. Right. I would say, I, you know, there wasn't. And uh, I would say the biggest thing was they mentioned that you drive your own career and entrepreneurship, to your point, and you managing your own thing is so big. You have to, you know, value yourself and then you have to find the right engagements and build the right networks. Right. Stuff that you talk about on your channel all the time. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah, totally. And I do feel that that exact same skills is what really helps you when you are a lone entrepreneur outside in the big yeah. world. You're doing exactly the same thing, whereas in, you're in an office space doing this, doing it right now. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. like I definitely, I so I actually seconded to the venture capital arm of Deloitte for a year. Okay. So I was the one going to, you know, these incubators and, you know, um, listening to, you know, pitches some of the stuff. pitches and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. before I joined Deloitte, um, I was also, I also did some work with Techstars before I joined Deloitte. I um, did like startup weekends where they were like, you know, which, you know, awesome. one, one of you. So like I've been on both sides 
And it, I, and it is really similar to consulting, which a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, very yeah. good, very good. And, and it's, it's good because this career gives you that opportunity, yeah. right? Like right now, the biggest thing for me is like learning how to control and build uh, massive teams, yeah. right? And, and, and making sure everyone is running or, or walking towards the same goal, right? That's such exactly. an important skill set and, and a difficult one, yeah. right? You would think project you know, management or whatever is very easy, but it's, it's hard to understand people, right? What their motives are and how to, how to get the best out of them, right? Become the right leader. Um, yeah. But taking a step back, you, you mentioned something uh, that always, uh, you know, strings a cord, cord on my end is the uh, convincing your parents that you're going into consulting or not or taking a yeah. year off, right? Um, was that a challenge for you, right? Did culturally, you know, we, we hear a lot of like, you know, in the uh, Indian subcontinent, right? Either you become a doctor, an mm -hmm. attorney, an engineer, right? Was yeah. that the expectation for you as well growing up? So I think my mum really wanted me to become a doctor. So I applied for physics <laughs> at uni. Okay. And mum was like, Kajal, where is physics going to take you? And I was like, mum, you know, I just love studying physics. It just interests me. Yeah. Why can't I do something which is interesting and passionate for me? Well, she's like, no, you know, doctors pay well, become yeah. a doctor. Um, but I think then she realised actually, you know, my mom, my mom's not, I don't think, my mom isn't strict. Like I've seen strict parents, but obviously your mom and your parents and your dad like want your happiness, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. no, they they eventually caved into physics. And when I went, when I was like, mom, I'm thinking about consulting. She was like, why not banking? You Like, you know, you make like, you know, and they name dropped a few people in banking, like they typically oh, yeah. would. Yep, and yep. we're like, you know, <laughs> this person makes 150K and he's only 26. You like how much money would be making in consulting? You yeah, know, I'm not yeah. doing Indian accent. I can put on the Indian accent if you wanted uh, to. No, too. it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and yeah, so um, I kind of had to slowly convince my mum and my dad that actually, hey, um, you know, eventually you can potentially make as much money in consulting. For them, it's all about money, by the way. Um, but mm -hmm. recently, my dad has been saying, Kajal, why don't you apply for McKinsey? Why don't huh. you apply for these, you know, these more prestigious firms? Okay. And I'm like, and I'm like, Dad, you know, you do realize that sometimes we win over projects compared to McKinsey. And, you know, it's not much difference between the work we do and they do and the way of thinking. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, for Indian parents, there's usually money or reputation to be Reputation, frank, the so. ranks, <laughs> reputation, the prestige. Prestige, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but apparently Deloitte, I'm not gonna say it actually, cause I was like, if I say it, then no, no, go uh, for it, just me you're... picking up Deloitte. <laughs> <laughs> but Deloitte is the biggest consulting firm in all across the world. And I was like, dad, <laughs> but like you do realize I work for the biggest consulting firm in the world. And he's like, yeah, that's not enough though. Like where else do you want me to go? I don't understand. <laughs> so you could, you could admit on this podcast, how much does Deloitte pay you for, uh, mm. you know, getting their name Doing out? This? No, no, Nothing. for getting their name out, you know, being their spokeswoman. <laughs> nothing but Deloitte if you want to pay me yeah I'm here just just message me at cardio at ignitconsulting.net <laughs> that, that is that is great that is great it actually have the the green color in the background because of that I, I try to represent whoever I'm speaking to so I love it <laughs> <laughs> that's great so and, and speaking of that right your parents and everything one of your fun facts you know you know I was gonna get there is that yeah. you have some uh, royal <laughs> blood in you uh, I don't know if most people know this, but, you know, should we be addressing you as your highness? And, uh... Oh, my God, no. <laughs> I tell us about that. Don't tell, I don't think even my friends know this very well, but because, like, okay. I don't talk about it. But um, from my mom's side, mm -hmm. my mom's dad, my mom, so my grandfather was a prince of a state in um, India, a really small state. You know, the whole, when the British came to India, it was the whole divide and conquer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, everyone, you have states there. So, yeah, my my, my, my grandfather's a prince in um, Devas, near Indore, which, um, you know, if anyone's Indian, no, knows India and, you know, is listening, um so yeah that's basically it wow but the palace is crumbling i was there like two years ago it's crumbling and but there is a palace um, but there is still... a palace oh wow okay <laughs> but <laughs> it's crumbling and like half of it's ours half of it's been given to like the people who live you know near the area and stuff so, yeah 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 um so yeah my 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 grand my, my, my grandmother has really fond memories you know well she had really fond memories growing up there even my mom did so wow um so it's crazy this is your mom's side 
my mom's side yeah yeah wow 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 wow. so when you when you go to india do you still like i guess is there some level of like recognition of your uh royal lineage when when you do go no to because i don't read like we don't really tell anyone you know like it's um like we don't really tell anyone and if we go to the mm. If we go to the area, they do know, like, okay, you know, we're coming to see the palace or we're coming to see, like, this really famous temple there or something. Okay. Um, and, but, like, other, but, like, you know, we don't milk it. We don't, like, you know, want to be treated differently. Right, we're, right, We're right. there to see our history, right? And to see, you know, where our ancestors grew up. So. Very um, good. So, yeah. But is that your, uh, when, when you do your icebreakers, is that your fun fact? No, but I don't it's know what not... I told you. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I was like thinking to myself, what is my like fun fact? And I really don't have many fun facts. I don't it, think. What's... I mean, you've been so... like your startups <laughs> and you took a year off. There's so much there. No, but like, it feels like um, when, I, I, okay, I'm one of those people where when, you know, when you talk about some of the, the achievements you made in your life, it feels like you're boasting and I hate that sometimes. So I'm just like, okay, what fun fact can I say that I went ice climbing in Iceland? But actually, that's not really fun, is wow. it? Like, you know. So um, this, I was like, why not just? Say it? it was the first thing that came to my head, which is why I told you. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I, I was reading. So I had about 54 replies just that two days that I posted it, and, yeah. and I was going through it. I was like, wait, this, this is, this is unique. We have, uh, <laughs> we have some royalty here, and, and you know, I'm, I'm into that a little bit because. Of, I think we've seen like this Game of Thrones and now you yeah. have like Bridgertons and all, all these like different shows coming up and it's all about yeah. the lineage and the royalty and everything, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, okay. and that, but don't worry, lineage is diluting, should not be recognized like that in life, guys. Oh yeah, yeah, so. 100%, 100%. <laughs> I think it's just, uh, to your point, right? I think that the history behind it, you know, where you come from, your roots, we should always yeah. remember and understand, but absolutely not the I'm better than you piece, right? Yeah, because yeah, I come from sure, the slime 100%. versus the other. Excellent. Yeah, it's quite interesting because actually my 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 grandmother used to tell me stories about like people in our family who used to fight in these really famous wars or used to like, you know, hmm. be part of the war councils and stuff like that. And, you know, who used to, and like I've wow. got family. It's crazy. I was like, you know, wow, I didn't realize how big, you know, some of, like, you know, some of these individuals are. Yeah, so when yeah. you learn your like when you go through your, you know, your ancestors and your culture, you learn so much even about, you know, the identity of your country and you know the uh things that people had to go through so i love learning this stuff i, I can imagine especially stuff. if there's a palace like you can actually go back and see it and, and relive history yeah. and walk through those halls and everything yeah yeah. that's no, very exactly. that's very cool excellent that's excellent crazy. so it's, so let's switch topics to your uh your massive growth and and sort of <laughs> the, the push behind your your social media presence right you sort of uh eight, eight months ago you came into the picture right um and it, you know i saw your first couple of posts they were very nice right very well thought out and then you just sort of parabolically grew since then and to an extent where you're just cutting people right it's like an exclusive club <laughs> you better engage or you're out <laughs> no, i'm joking so <laughs> how so sorry what brought that about and and how has it been and how do you find time and and uh, topics and all of that so in terms of growth like how uh, do, how your, your whole social growth? media yeah your whole social media presence Okay, in terms of how it grew or just like how about how, how I you got it. started? Sorry. Yeah, like how, how did you get started okay. in this whole uh, social media? Okay, so um, I had this idea years ago. And basically, I'm one of those people where I have a book and I can't find it right now. But I have a silver book around this big. All my ideas that I get whenever <laughs> I have a pen and it's around, I write it down. Idea so book, I love few, it. Yeah, and around a few years ago, I, um, I wrote this idea down. And then the pandemic hit and... Oh, by the way, this this book, I make business cases and I'm like, okay, prioritizing, which one should I take for? Like, which one should I try for a bit? You know, oh, I'm man. one of these people. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the pandemic hit and there was nothing to do. Yeah. And I'm one of those people where I hate just sitting and not doing anything. I have to... I have to get, um, you know, I have to, I have to do something. As mm -hmm. I said, I when if I if I get I get bored quickly and I hate it and I just it's this itch I can't explain it. <laughs> so um, it's coming through pretty clearly. <laughs> <laughs> and I essentially what I did was at that time applications were you know beginning. So mm -hmm. a few people reached out to me and. Actually, at Deloitte, a lot of people direct, you know, into had directed individuals to me just to talk one to one. You know, what is Deloitte like? You know, what is, you know, what are they looking for in the consulting application? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, why not just rather than one to one, make this a, you know, one to many relationship in a way, yeah. where I could help 
people. And more importantly for me was giving equal access of information to people. Mm. So I don't know how it is in America, but in the UK, um, this inf- the to get to get the information about what consulting is really like, or you know, to get prepared to for consulting interviews. You there is quite there is a big stark difference between who gets the information and who doesn't get the information. Really? Um, yeah. So I would say you know um, what people would assume to be the better ranked universities in the UK would definitely have individuals um, who are more well versed in the whole case interview, for instance, uh, right? okay, okay. to help people. And at the same time, these individuals can probably afford case. tutors and all this mm. stuff right yeah, yeah, yeah whereas um other individuals you know wouldn't even know what consulting is or wouldn't have even like heard about it yeah so it's about for me it was about giving this you know equal access of opportunities to you know individuals who wanted to get into consulting and then secondly i had no clue what consulting would really be like when i applied it was completely different to what i thought it would be yeah um in in a, in a good way and in a bad way um so i also wanted to be really transparent about mm-hmm. that and i think um thirdly i think consulting and consultants can have a negative connotation to themselves i'm not sure about what you think but sometimes i think clients especially may think like oh we're bringing a consultant why do we need a consultant or yeah, yeah, you yeah. know um consultants are so cold they can just lay off people Um, so I wanted to bring, I wanted to break that stereotype in some, in, 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 in another way and also break the stereotypes within consulting. So, okay. you know, gen, like, you know, being a woman in consulting, being brown in consulting, um, gender pay, you know, all this stuff, you know, oh, so, um, I haven't got to it yet except the woman piece, but I've always wanted to kind of, um, broaden that out in the whole, into the whole work piece. Um, mm. I think it's a really important topic to talk about. Excellent, excellent. No, no, I mean, that's great. And and you've you've made it universal, right? It's so easy for anyone to follow and just get access to you, right? And oh, I think thanks. that's, that's <laughs> no, it's seriously, it's, that's the beauty of, I would say, social media and Instagram or YouTube that it mm. makes it personal, right? The one-to-many yeah. is still personal, right? I'm sure so, you get messages that you reply to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I completely agree, but I don't feel like, and this is just me, I don't feel like my personality comes across on my Instagram. all my YouTube as much right now. Like okay. I, even on my YouTube, I would say that I'm still a little bit like not, I am myself, but I'm still like holding back, I would mm. say. Um, and on my Instagram, it's getting that balance between educating individuals and then maybe showing them a peek of my personal life. And I don't think people care about my personal life, which is why I've not really spoken about, you know, things I've been doing in the day and stuff and kept it quite educational. So, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's not about like, so for me, it's like, am I really serving a purpose? Am I really helping people by every single post I I do? And that's what I think about. Like, I think, you know, is someone going to take away something from it? And if they don't, then I'm not going to post it. So which right. is why some of my personal and pers- personal stuff doesn't come come through. And my personality, I don't think comes through a lot of the time. That's just, that's just between, you know, me and all my, list, all the listeners here. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 it's a, it's a valid, I would say, uh, internal conflict, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's like, what's the right balance of education to your point versus like mm-hmm. sharing who you are because yeah. one has influence over the other, right? You're the way you're explaining the, the, the goals behind why you're doing this is driven off of yeah. your personality. But at the yeah. same time you question, like, should I post me? you know, go out to this uh, <laughs> restaurant or whatever, right? What I'm eating, like, do people really care? Or do they not care? Yeah. Um, I, exactly. I would tend to think that. Um, they don't. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. I, I think in, uh, in, a, in a platform like Instagram, at least, right? Yeah. At least stories and stuff, we can't take more liberties because people do care, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I, when I was, uh, you know, going through the ranks, I did care that, you know, how, how is a manager, right? Going about mm-hmm. his day, are they just focused on work? And that humanizes mm-hmm. people. I mean, that's partly yeah. the reason why I started this, right? It humanizes you, yeah. right? Especially yeah, sure. when I was younger, right? And you would look at either senior managers or partners, right? There's, there's like, oh my God, can I even email them? Can I even ping them? You would think <laughs> 10 times. And, and yeah. you know, when you get to that level, you're just like, they're people. Everyone has yeah. fears. Everyone has aspirations. Everyone has goals, sure. right? Just like yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and, and I think that, that should shine. I think, uh, you know, as, as I'm sure you're going to have a very uh, fast and upwards trajectory, Right, you're humanizing yourself along the way with your yeah. platform. 
Yeah, no, thank you. But you said something I'm interesting. You said that there, there's some negative aspects of consulting that you wanted to dispel. Talk about that. What, what, do, you, what do you find as negative, negative. Or, or, or difficult or what, you know, whatever you want to call it? I think it depends on um, from whose eyes you're asking from. Because if you're talking to for to a, a client, yeah, um, you know, uh, you know, for even even if you're like let's say the board versus the people on the ground, the connotations do differ, right? Yep. So yep. if you're on the ground, it's like oh, they're coming in to to do something which I can do. Like what's what's the point? And then like you know, from a board perspective, might be like, why am I paying so much for yeah. you know whatever, right? Um, essentially, it's like the value of cons- consulting um, and consultants um, sometimes isn't um portrayed correctly and then i think um when you're in consulting and you know when you're applying for consult sorry when you're applying for consulting a lot of individuals think that you know some of the myths around consulting terms of let's say um you know um working your butt off 24 7 and having to go home at 3 a.m for instance right or something as you know um all consultants are a little bit um, cold, you know, it's a bit cutthroat and it's a little bit uh, of a cold culture in some of these consulting firms and stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, in that sense, it's humanizing ourselves as well. There's another factor I wanted to bring uh, bring into it as well. Okay. And I mean, it, it, some of that is true though, right? Like the, the crazy work life and uh, in, in some regards, whether it's a tough engagement yeah. or you're at the tough type of an engagement. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, no, and- true. But it's, I feel like people actually think it's all the time where I don't mm-hmm. think that is true. I think it's, you know, pivotal moments in your project or if it's a really intense short project, you know, that may define it. Yeah. But, um, you know, when you're on the bench, you're on the bench and you've got a few a weeks to chill, right? But like, you know, <laughs> um, not well, chill compared to a project, um, but- Lloyd's listening. <laughs> It's some of, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> um, some of the realities of consulting yeah. is another thing I want to bring to aspiring consultants who don't read. You kind of see it's like a wall, right? It's like one of those like I don't know, like a mist, right? So like demystifying consulting. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. No, it's very true. It's ups and downs, and I think that's true for any career, right? Any corporate career, I would say, mm. goes through the ups and down cycles. Now, depending on your level, your engagement, the type of engagement, right? There may be more of that. But I, but I also think because of the COVID and the lockdowns, right, there yeah. is a culture shift to work more. I'm seeing more and yeah. more people work longer hours. For sure. Uh, maybe it's out of fear. Maybe it's out of because your home might as well work. I boredom. don't know. Yeah. Or boredom, right? But people <laughs> yeah. are getting on sooner, logging off later, and it is affecting them at a personal level, right? I think that relationship building is missing. And we tend to have short tempers and yeah, go for it. Plug. I've got a plug here. <laughs> And plug. Go ahead, Alice. <laughs> go, go for it. I've got a video coming out on Tuesday on on how to dispel how to stop that because okay. for me actually I've um I've I've been logging in on earlier and finishing way later. I think meetings are finishing two hours later than what they used to. Yeah, yeah. Like meetings used to finish at like five p.m. or six p.m. and now they finish at like eight p.m. And I'm eight, like, whoa. Eight, yeah. Like, this is past my dinner time slash nearly my bedtime, you know? <laughs> so um, I've managed to create and set some boundaries in my work. And I wanted to share that. So that's on my video coming out I on Tuesday. <laughs> definitely tune in. I, I'm going to tune in because I'm still trying to figure it out, right? I, I think uh, one of the, as we get into 2021, one of my goals is to stop that, right? For my engagements and my teams. But it's it's so yeah. difficult. So I, I would love to learn from you and how you yeah. have figured out the secret Thanks. sauce. Yeah, that'd be good. It works for me. It might not work for you, though. That's the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it works for Deloitte people only and not Accenture. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but so I guess one going off of that, right? Um, yeah. I, I do watch your videos, right? And I, I do follow you. So please don't cut me off your list. But no. one of the things I'm interesting about is um, like your recent video about planning, right? It, it sort of went into just like the structured different methods and all of that. Yeah. Um and I, I mean this sort of in a in a inquisitive inquisitive way, um, mm-hmm. you know, more than anything is. So do you do you actually go through those motions and and you know plan your day or whatever in in that structure? Are you that structured in your life, or is planning, that more of a framework? So sorry, um, planning goals. <laughs> I think I had I had a video on planning goals. Yeah, right? planning goals or or you know yeah. uh, and and just tracking them throughout the year, right? Yeah. And and yeah. the different methods that you show. So you actually follow that structure. Yeah, and I would say that I have tried all of those throughout my career. Okay. And and um, I adapt which framework I use based on what 
it is to me. So if it's like a business project, I'd use like a different type of goal framework. If it's a personal project, I use a different type of goal framework. But is it, is um, it actually like, are you sitting there like, hey, I'm going to switch one framework into another or is it just naturally you're just trying out different things and you just call it, it was, whatever? Yeah. Yeah, initially yeah. it was naturally me just trying out random ways for me to be like mm -hmm. okay like you know what's more effective for me to actually like you know make sure i achieve this okay um and i didn't really know they had terms like these until like you know when i joined consulting and when i learned about different ways to track goals and stuff internally um so so yeah i didn't realize i was doing it but i was i was trying on different methods and um i i would say that you know I definitely do it from a career perspective, okay. a finance perspective, um, not from a dating or relationships perspective. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to have one boyfriend <laughs> and uh, goal. <laughs> goal um, and how to get there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some key results, five Tinder dates. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't do that. Um, but I definitely um, have started doing it for personal projects as well. Okay. Um, especially with the whole social media thing, you know, the whole social media thing was, um, you know, I like I had to set a goal around it because in in a way it's like a little side hustle, right? Yeah, yeah. Which you're doing, um, which, um, yeah. So I I do use it. Um, and I I'm one of those people where I don't like to talk about things which I haven't experienced. Right. So um, there will be topics which I don't talk about on on my channel, and that's purely because I haven't experienced it. Mm. And I and I don't want to talk about it until I have some credibility in myself that I've I've done it. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. And that's essentially everything I share is something which I've done. I've Very learned good. from and realized what works and doesn't work. So it's genuine, essentially. It's not. It's not. I've, yeah, I've tried to do textbook. that. You know, I think the only time when you know, right? So for example, like boutique consulting, I've never worked there, but I spoke about it. Like I would speak to consultants there and find out, you know, um, Get there, yeah. how they find it. So. I, I think that's what's really helped me in in terms of YouTube videos. But I think I think people realize that they're quite genuine. Mm. Um, from based yep. off the comments I get, based off the comments purely I get, um, is what I I feel. So um, that's why I think you know people can relate to some of the stuff I say and realize that actually there is some authenticity to it. I agree, and, and it's so it's so um, it's easy to pick up, right? The um, oh, thanks. people pick up. <laughs> Well, no, it, the the contrary, and 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 sort of when you're being authentic, because you could you could see and you could you could relate to it, right? If it's authentic yeah. versus like textbook, yeah. right? Like yeah, here, yeah, here's sure. frameworks, and I do this, right? It's really not. It's yeah. coming off of as uh, uh, trying too hard or or whatever. Yeah. But and I and think that's why you've seen that growth. Yep. Yeah, and but I do I do think like okay, work for a lot of people isn't fun. It's not something you want to listen to on a Saturday or a <laughs> Sunday, right? Like things to do with work, right? So then in my head, I'm like. <clears throat> how much hope do I have to do consulting? Like, you know, how much do people actually want to listen to it? Yeah, yeah. Because eventually you can probably go through all the topics in terms of how to get into consulting, which I think I've done mostly of them. But in terms of being more successful in your career, you can go, you know, in so many different ways. Yeah, and yeah. They also don't listen to a really textbooky thing on a Saturday or Sunday. They want to listen to things like, you know, your actual genuine opinions. Uh -huh. um, but I would also say, like, I sometimes I'm a little bit hesitant um, talking about some of my experiences purely because I work for a big corporate firm and in yep. some way I am represent some of the stuff I do say does represent them or is my experience in their firm and hence representing the brand so um, I am honest but I wonder how I, I like I will not talk about certain ex certain topics hmm. um, because like, what? like salary like salary for instance right okay because um I think consulting firms are a little bit um, anal about how confident their confidential data, such as salary. So I won't talk about salary. I, I, but I is would that, make people. Is, is that confidential? Because now, now this. You have Glassdoor, is, is, right? Yeah, but, and you have Glassdoor. I felt like so. Here's where it gets interesting because I had the same mental challenge in my mind, right? How much yeah. of my salary, my career, my experience is shareable versus taboo. I, yeah. I wouldn't say it's it's off the table. I don't think there's anything incorrect by sharing it, right? It's your mm -hmm. salary. You could share it, whatever. There's no NDA that you signed that you can't share your salary. But how do you how do you tackle some of those challenges that you mentioned up front around the the gender pay gap quality and and uh, 
someone, uh, you know, getting paid more than another for whatever reason, mm. right? Without sharing some of that, right? Without true. honing that culture. So what, where's the balance? That is completely true. Um, and it's something which I've been struggling with. And I would say that I don't really have an answer to yet because um, lem- like, let me be honest, I tried to talk about salary and I had a salary video coming out, but I knew it was quite a, a taboo subject for my firm. So oh, I did sure. message the brand team in my firm to double check. Okay. Uh, and they, were, they they shut it down. They completely shut it down. <laughs> really? So yeah, in terms of talking openly about, you know, how salary works in consulting and comparing Deloitte salary to, you know, some of the other firms. Um, hmm. So they shut that down. But I would say, guys, if you are interested in salaries, there is a great uh, website, Management Consulted. They do a salary report every year and is very accurate. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, um, paying, or paying Kajal on the side. She'll probably tell you. <laughs> um, but that's really and, interesting. That's interesting but, because these global... Yeah, go for it. Finish no, no, your no, go ahead. No, no, it's, go it, ahead. It's interesting where... It, that, that's a challenge because I, I have in my career, and, and this is not for Accenture or anything, I'm mm. just saying generally have found cases where my peers that are at my level, right? Maybe same gender, maybe different gender, mm-hmm. right? Are, there is a discrepancy. And because we don't yeah. talk about it openly, there is a, a difficulty in making sure everyone is at the same, uh, the base level at least. Yeah. Variable comp, and, right? We yeah. can get into details, but without talking about it, without sharing that, right? And then there's an mm-hmm. expectation, right? You're kind of hush-hush about it. Like you get paid a little bit more, mm-hmm. you may feel proud and you don't want to share that because you, you're you fearful that it may go away or whatever. Yeah. But but to make things work better and make sure that mm-hmm. everyone who deserves it and they don't end up leaving the firm, I feel like that's a topic we need to get into. No, totally, 100% agree. And um, I do find that there is disparity in pay, um, not, I mean, not just because of your gender or of your color of your skin, um, but also based on, you know, which area you sit in and things, yep. small things like that, right? Yep, so yep. you may sit in consulting and actually you like, um, you may sit in consulting, you may be sitting in the most, you know, highest revenue driving part of consulting, but you may be getting paid less than another area, you know? Um, so if we don't talk about this, people won't firstly know that there is an issue which I think a lot of people don't exactly. really, you know, speak about it. Um, and then also, secondly, I find that in consulting, we do not put our hands up and say like, hey, I want to get paid a little bit more. I think 100%. I deserve to get paid a little bit more. And because we don't talk about it, that means we don't do actions like that. So there is, I wouldn't say it's a taboo, but I would say that people feel uncomfortable asking for more money in consulting Whereas if you were working something a little bit less structured than consulting, yeah. I would say, because I think yeah. consulting is quite a structured pathway, a lot of people t- negotiate their salaries every year. But that yep. culture does not come into consulting. And some would say that you can probably do it once or twice in your career or be really strategic about how you ask for more pay. Um, but I find that, um, honestly, a little bit traditional and needs to be changed. 100%. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think we... We tend to stay quiet about it, right? For yeah. whatever whatever reason, uh, but but that's something that if if pe- more people were to do it, and there's nothing in your contract, at least I think, that prevents you from sharing that, right? Uh, now, is that something that is frowned upon? Absolutely. Mm. I think the firms, and, and I'm sorry, talking about the firm at large, not any individual yeah. person, would prefer it that it not get out, right? It not get yeah. leaked, or if that's the right word for it, because that. Number one, I think it, it um, the more people that are quiet about it, the less money has to go mm-hmm. out, right? But if you feel like you deserve it, don't wait until yeah. you're ready to just quit before bringing Agree. it up, right? Because then yeah. at that point, it's, it's, it's very difficult to salvage that relationship with the firm or yourself mm-hmm. and you're trying to convince yourself and you're just going to be burnt out because you, you feel like you're not getting the, the value back from whatever firm you work for. Uh, for. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, as you, you completely hit the nail there, you're not getting the value back for what you believe you're deserved to, yeah. you know, to get and for what you're working um, at. And often um, that ends up leading to a spiral where you begin to hate the company that you work for a little bit more, begin to hate work a little bit more. And, you know, it's, it's just like a never ending spiral. So you need to foster a community where you feel comfortable to talk about this. Yeah. And I find that, you know, that's why having coaches, you know, mentors in, in your in your in your group, in your in your firm is really important thing to have. Hundred percent. Otherwise yeah. you won't 
begin to understand or begin to even understand even how to approach those conversations. Exactly. No, no, very good, yeah. very good. Uh, and, and I hope there's a video uh, in the future from <laughs> Kajal t- telling us, not, not maybe the salary, but how to negotiate, right? Uh, how do you yeah. negotiate your salary if you've, you've done that? And I've, I've done that, right, previously and or in some cases successfully, in some cases it didn't work out, right? And I, I'd love yeah. to talk about it. Maybe if I ever find I'd the love- time, uh, make videos about it. But yeah, I, I think it's a you very- come onto my channel and talk about it. I would love to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, I- I I, I've, I definitely have some stories where I definitely pushed the boundaries a little bit um, okay. and, and I shouldn't have, and I should have consulted okay. the, the social media or the compliance teams before I did. Yeah. And we could talk about that. Some of them were just yeah, terrible. For sure. But uh, I think it's one of those topics where it benefits the larger population if you do get into it. Uh, I mean, I, I, in my firm, I have a small circle of trusted friends mm-hmm. that are very open with each other. Right? Yeah. I mean, I'll just open up my salary page and said, here's my breakdown. Right, just make sure you're at par, or let me make sure that I'm at par, right, for my level yeah. and my experience and my value. And I think yeah. that that works out in the longer term. Yeah, no, it's likewise um, managed to have that as well. So, just uh, another topic that I wanted to get in with you. You recently won a top 100 woman in uh, in tech award. My God, yes. ha- <laughs> top 100 in uh, all of uh, Europe, right, or UK, or UK, uh, UK, in UK. I mean, that's still a quite the feat. How? How did you go about and, and you know, what, I guess, how did that come to be? So I think someone uh, very kindly nominated me and um, I essentially just went through the process. Um, they were mostly looking for my achievements or the impact I made um, yeah. within within my firm. So um, there was a pieces of sign off of, you know, obviously talking about some of the client projects I've done yeah. um, internally, but essentially... Um, it ended up going through through a few rounds and um, having a judging panel. And there was also a, like one factor being like a public vote, which thank you. A lot of people probably watching this voted for me. So thank you very much. Um, and ended up, you know, winning, you know, being one of the top hundred. Uh, yeah. What, what an achievement. No, what an achievement. <laughs> I, I, I would probably behind like your, your, where your door is, I would just have that you know, as a plastic <laughs> top, <not a> flashing sign. <laughs> Funny thing is though, I told my dad this. I was like, dad, yeah, you know, um, I, I woke up in the morning. I was like, oh my God, mom, guess what? You know, yeah. I, I, I won this. Went to my dad, I was like, dad, guess what? He was like, okay, great. Oh no. Next, what's next? What's next? <laughs> oh and my I'm God. just like, no, oh, dad, it's, it's, dad. What's oh. the, the bar is so high. With, with I know, uh, I'm like, what will impress you father? <laughs> what will impress you? <laughs> So yeah, That's no, crazy. um, yeah, it's been it's been great. Um, and you know, part I do feel I'm going talking about awards. I didn't really realize the power of having an award backing you. Um, okay. Because I I I just thought like okay, it's just like another title which you can just add to your CV, right? Um, but I do feel that having certain awards is good for your future career projections absolutely um, because it provides credibility and it provides um you know also just allows people to find you and allows you to create new opportunities so you're not looking for them they're coming to you so um you know if you are started you know if you are in consulting if you're in any career on have a think about what awards there are in um going on and just go for it the worst you can get is a no like that's exactly exactly yeah so you're, you're secretly telling us uh, and telling Deloitte, uh, Deloitte, if you're listening still, <laughs> she's, uh, a lot of people are trying to poach Kajol. So uh, <laughs> you better keep her happy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I just find that, um, that, yeah, that, okay, honestly, there is a lot that comes through. Yeah. But um, I, I am happy where I am, but I will move for the, for a really interesting stretching role. I definitely would. Okay. But it has to be something which I'm really passionate about. So, so like, um, it has to be something which, like, I would leave Deloitte to do this, you know? Okay. Okay. So, okay. so it has it, to be a, a major jump for you to uh, yeah. transition. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what is the long-term goal? What is it? Do you see yourself, like, staying in consulting up to partner level? Like, what, what are you oh, thinking gosh. about? On that? <laughs> um, so I have... I am one of those people where I probably like had a few different, have a, have a few different ideas. 
what I could be right. and a few different routes. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what? Like, you know, just try and place different. So basically, let me tell you what I do. I'm one of those people where I'm, I literally do trial and error. I'm one of those people where, okay, these are my different goals. I could potentially be like, let's say a partner, um, you know, in industry, in, um, you know, my, my own thing, for instance. Yeah. And then I reverse engineer it. So these are the things or the steps I need to do to get there, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll try all of these different little three different goals. I'll try different parts of it to see like, okay, like, you know, am I being successful in one of these steps? If I'm not, okay, let me try like, you know, something else to see what's, what's going to work. Because right now I actually think I'd be happy doing any of them because, mm. um, well, because I'm kind of narrowed it down to these few things I potentially want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think, you know, I think, I think ideally, Okay, let's just be honest here. I think ideally, I'd like to have my own consulting company. Okay. Okay. So, which is difficult when you're like one man show. <laughs> no, that's um, interesting. Yeah. So I'd love to do that. Like a lot of people would have said like, oh, don't even go into the whole entrepreneurship space, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. I'd, I'd love to do that. But as a side hobby in terms of, you know, investing in startups, advising startups, for instance. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'd love to do that. Um. But I'd love to have my own consulting company at the end of the day. Mm. I absolutely love the work I do. Um, and it's just it's just like, how do I do this? <laughs> Which is what I'm struggling with right now. Um, yeah, I'm sure you'll figure it out. You you have uh, you, you have the right structure to think about it. And years to figure it out, right? I think it's something that comes yeah. with more experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that would be ideal. But worse and worse, you know, I'd love to, you know, obviously be be you know i'd obviously love to do my own thing at the same time like non-consulting like a natural like you know product or yeah. something yeah, yeah yeah um or i would love to be like you know a ceo or something of a big footsie hundred company just casually you know? right just uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like what do people when people ask me what's my favorite position i'm like ceo <laughs> ceo make me ceo <laughs> please one day someone <laughs> uh, you know it may never happen I'm but sure one can only it. hope yeah. no one can only hope right and you're just putting it out there right so and maybe hope. that's when your dad would come back and say you know what i'm proud of you <laughs> <laughs> at that point no, i'm sure so they, they're very proud i think parents do this to you know keep us encouraged and, and make sure there's yeah, a higher bar for sure yeah i know for sure um my mom and dad have been really really supportive yeah. i think my mom actually talking about um supportive i think like my mom and dad didn't really see the um use of youtube my mom was like um my mom was like casual you're you putting yourself out there on the internet aren't weird creepy men going to come and talk to you like any Tom Dick and Harris going to come and talk to me mom was like really like yeah. insecure about you know safe you know safety and my dad's just like why bother like what is this going to do like like you know you're wasting oh your time same here right yeah. so um that's been quite interesting as well but the person who's had my back has been my brother like mm. my brother um like is the one battling my mom and dad being like you know there is used to it let just give it like two years three years consistency will pay off so um younger or older you know, yeah he's younger than me actually. he's younger than you I'm are the okay oldest, yeah can you Incons believe i'm the oldest in the family <laughs> <laughs> you're still pretty young uh in in uh is he in consulting or is he in the, is still studying or so the... he does actuary so okay. um but he doesn't mm. do he doesn't do the consulting side of it he does the more technical um side of it so okay so, yeah. okay i've tried Very to convince nice. him to do do to to do consulting but i was gonna like, say no. like after all your videos living <laughs> in the same household you haven't been able to convince him that, i haven't a, unfortunately that should be a goal of yours <laughs> i know i mean like not obviously my words aren't magic every time <laughs> so if you that that's an interesting one and i asked this to everyone who joined so if you had to define consulting for someone who didn't know what it was what's your definition of consulting now you know with your experience and you teach this to people define consulting for me oh i mean okay consulting is such a vague term but if you wanted me to sum it up in like three four words it's like yeah. consultants consultants solve problems literally right okay. because you have marketing consultants you have supply chain consultants you have brand consultants you have management strategy you even have like actuarial consulting right but all they're doing is solving a business problem, right? So if you want to be a little bit more specific, it would be like solving a business problem, which is either helping to indirectly or directly um, reduce costs or increase revenues in some okay. shape or form. That the, that the that's, client that's themselves very, can't do? Yeah, sorry. So yeah, which, which um, they probably could do themselves, right? Mm. But sometimes they may not have enough time, right? For instance, um, 
it's not that they don't have enough knowledge power. It may be they need, they, you know, it's also that, you know, consultants bring a network. They bring industry experts to verify and validate some of your thinking a yeah. lot of the time, right? So I don't think it's not about they can't do it. I think it's sometimes it's easier to give it to someone else or it's a validation to give it to someone else. If that Very makes nice. Sense. Sorry. <laughs> no, it, it's good. It's good. I, I, um, there's a reason behind me asking. I always try to get the folks who are experienced in it, folks who are trying to teach others what it is, yeah. right? Getting their perspective on what consulting is because now nine years in, uh, doing it day in and day out, I yeah. it's still probably the most challenging question to answer, right? Yeah. Right. My, my, yeah, ask my sure. wife what I do. She'll probably <laughs> won't be able to tell you. Well, she'll she'll yeah. throw some buzzwords and you know what I do, but it's it's a difficult career to explain it because it's not, it's so many things and it's still one thing. And it's so many, you're, I think you hit it on the nail there. It's so many things, right? Yeah. Um, and you're developing so many skill sets. Yeah. Stakeholder management, product management, you know, um, processes, the process flow and all this, all this stuff, right? So mm -hmm. there is, a, there is so many skill sets and things you're doing that this is why I actually do closely align startup, uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, consultants to be entrepreneurs entrepreneurs I really yeah. think that so i like wholeheartedly you know having experienced entrepreneurial life on both sides i yeah. do think that uh you know consulting closely aligns to entrepreneurship in my opinion so uh, absolutely and i think that that's where we started right you jumped into consulting yeah. to gain those skills yeah. it comes full circle at the end of the day and then yeah, and you yeah. know you'll, you'll pick those things up um and then one final one for just to you know folks to know Ooh, take the your time personal side of you <laughs> Uh, what, what do you do for fun as hobbies? Like, I, I think you oh, danced gosh. or you used to dance. What, what's, uh, uh, what's, what's, yeah, what's, what's, like <laughs> <laughs> what, what's Kajal's like pastime, right? When you're not working and there's not crazy hours. And, and I'm sure we'll see the video on Tuesday of how do you find time to not only work and, and kick ass at it, oh. also do the YouTube thing, but what's the other yeah. side of Kajal? Um, a few, I would say. So when, um, you know, when lockdown wasn't here, I definitely was, you know, out every weekend with my friends, you know, yeah. just catching up with friends. I love food. I'm a big foodie. Trying out every restaurant in London is one of my goals, you know. So I'm uh, probably like, I would say I'm probably like three quarters there. I, I eat wow. a lot out, I would say. Um, and I'm not sure you can see, but I'm a big reader. I love yep. my books. Um, I do. I like to read and listen to podcasts. And... Um, I like to write. Now, hmm. I'm a big, like, fiction writer, I would say. Interesting. Um, and I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm also a big TV bum. Like, I will watch Korean dramas, Chinese dramas, and Bollywood <laughs> all day, every day if I could. So I'm a big, you know, like, I, 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 I also play, like, you know, the guitar and the violin when I want to. Um, and I... Like I draw sometimes. I mean, I, as you can see, there's so many different things there's I do. So many, so many things. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I rotate around it because I, as I said, I get bored easily. I lose motivation on certain things. So I need different purposes or passions to keep yeah. me going. And yeah. hence I switch around and play around with different things. But I, what I would say is probably the most I do is I read the most, I would say. Um, and I write the most, I would say as well. So th this fiction writing, what 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 genre? What do you write about? This oh is gosh, so God. I am such a geek. I'm not gonna lie. I <laughs> um I'm a big fantasy girl. I love reading books to do with um you know fantasy. So elves, you know all the whole shebang, Lord of the Rings. Lord that of the is Rings, up my street, guys. You know oh, wow. that is all up my street. So um I'm a big fiction uh, reader in that genre as well. Um, and I've been trying to do nonfiction a bit more, but, uh, so dry you know, compared to that. <laughs> it's so dry compared to that. <laughs> You're not going to find elves, maybe, maybe the stock market, there's some elves. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, but that's, that's pretty cool that you actually write. Like, I mean, a lot of the, like reading is obviously, you know, a great activity. It's, it's good to yeah. sort of, you know, uh, just, just casually read and, and, uh, enjoy yeah. but writing on top of it on, on the topics that you care about, that's pretty interesting. Have you published anything writing... on? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Have Have you published anything ever in your writing, like whether it's on forums or? Yeah. So I used to write from. I think I used to. I started publishing on forums from the age of eleven. So wow. Um, so there's some really uh, there's some like some short stories I've done on um online, but I haven't really like 
put it anywhere in a book. I find it really easy to write the beginning and end, but the middle, it kills me. Like, I kind of, <laughs> I like, kind of, like, you know, it starts, you know, it ends. <laughs> <laughs> the middle kills me. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I'd love to write a book maybe, like, you know, in 10, 15 years' time. Yeah. But I don't think that time is now where you can just sit down, plan every chapter, oh, plan man, the whole so plot, difficult. you know. Um, but, you know, I find that writing scripts for YouTube is very different to writing, like, you know, writing for, um, you know, fiction books. Um, both are pleasurable. But when you're writing scripts for YouTube, which I like to do because um, it's the value you're bringing and making sure that individuals are, um, you know, getting the most out of your videos. It's it's a much more concise and much more like dry, I would say, because okay. you want to give as much information as you can and as less time as possible because people's time is money. People's time is what, you know, um, and they, you know, I think with everyone being at home right now in the pandemic, we have less focus and we divert our attention far too quick. Like, you know, yeah. so it's making sure that I can give you as much value as you can. And hence, I'm quite like less, less fluff, concise videos as much as I can. Whereas when I write and when I write fiction, I am like, you know, two pages are just talking about the sky or something like that, you know? Oh, it's man. fluff, fluff, fluff. So it's very different, I would say, when you're writing. So like, where, where can people find some of your work? Oh, gosh, they, guys. If, no. if they... <laughs> Not ready to share. Not ready to share. I Gosh, when I was like 11, I was reading through the like conspiracy forums. And okay. on these conspiracy <laughs> forums, they used to have like a fiction area. And I used to test some of my stuff there. Yeah. I used to write a little bit on Wattpad when I was 11. I remember those days when Wattpad was really big. But I haven't really, um, you know, published it anywhere else from there. Oh, so man, I'm, I'm I used sure to have like people... a few blogs myself, so, which yeah, I, that... which which died as well. So. It's died. No, that that's so interesting. It's such a different thing. And, and I think it shows... Uh, if if I'm assuming if one were to read your uh, published content, it would it would sort of go into the int intricacies of your mind and your thoughts and how that you know <laughs> relates to consulting. And I'm sure there's some characters in your fiction work that can relate to humans that you come yeah, across with probably. that work. Yeah, yeah, probably actually <laughs> quite interesting. I imagine if I wrote a book about consulting, I think no one would read it. <laughs> it's one of my to dos. I, I gotta. I've I've met enough characters along the way yeah. and i'm a character myself right yeah uh that, that i think it's interesting to come up with a light read or something yeah i obviously have zero time for it can't probably never yeah. going to do it but it's, it's on my bucket list for sure i i think you should i think um what you find is there's a lot of um like educational consulting books yeah but no one really talking about some of the stories and learnings um exactly take away so I think, you know, if you wrote it from a story perspective, like, um, let me think of a book which does that, like, Woman Who Rise is a great book. I, um, it, and it literally goes through stories where, um, you know, where people haven't showed certain traits and how they battled it and so forth. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If you did something along that front, rather than a, an educational perspective, I think it'd be really compelling. Um, but probably best to do that once you leave Accenture. <laughs> <laughs> we are public. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But uh, Kajal, thank you so much for joining us, uh, on, on joining me on this podcast. I, you know, you were definitely one of the folks that I wanted to speak to because of your you. extremely varied and, and uh, unique perspectives and background and the stuff that you're bringing to the table. Uh, and I hope folks thank get you. to see that when they hear or watch this, that you know, there's the Kajal on social media, there's a Kajal at Deloitte, and, and there's a Kajal that, you know, is the personal life Kajal that uh, I think more people should befriend and, and get to know. <laughs> what's to offer there? For sure. Um, thank you so much for having me on. I've loved talking to you. This is this is great. It's like a little chat. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great, right? It's just an easy forum. And I, you know, I, I tend to, and I hope to bring folks back right down yeah. the line as well, because yeah, just sure. to see how, you know, what are the stuff that we talked about that came to be, and maybe you're going to be at Deloitte, maybe you're going to be the yeah. CEO of a company, who knows? Yeah. All right, where you're headed. I, I love, like, you know, you've also made me uh, realize that actually, maybe I should just put, put my personality a bit more out there because, um, well, it's, it's really nice and comfortable talking to you. And obviously people are going to see my personality through yeah. this, which is great. Um, but I should definitely put my personality out there a bit. It's my learning from this as well. So thank you for teaching me that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm always happy to, you know, part, give out more than I take in. So thank you for that. Uh, no. But yeah, Kajal, uh, loved having you on. You know, hope to hear Thanks. from you again. And I'm definitely looking forward to your video on Tuesday because I need that. Thank you so much. <laughs> take care. Have a good rest of your weekend.